In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create different types of primitive geometry inside of ZBrush. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to start the project off, I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit the lightbox key or you can hit the comma key to open this up. Go to the projects tab and I usually like to start a project off with this Dynasphere 128. If you double click on it, uh, you can open that up. If you've got a project already open, it's going to ask you if you want to save. Say no for that. So the nice thing about this one is it already puts you with a Dynamesh sphere and it allows you to just sculpt on the mesh and you could uh, subtract from it if we turn on the polyframe and if I hold on control and then drag a marquee in the open viewport, it's going to remesh automatically for me. So it already puts us in this really nice mode for us to uh, start sculpting and making some shapes. So that's kind of the first way I'm going to hit undo to get back. So that's just going to give us a nice default kind of sphere to start working with. The other way is if you're working with this uh, Dynamesh system, you can go and say B and then I for insert. And then there's a bunch of different insert brushes that you have within here. Uh, let's just take a look at the IMM primitives right here like this. And you can see at the very top, if we click and drag, we've got a bunch of different objects that we can select and we can just click and then drag out on the model like this. Now, if we add this together with the gizmo tool, it automatically knows the orientation that we drug off from the normal of the surface. And we can just take this and we can push it into the surface, put it back on draw. Now, what I was telling you about the remeshing part is if you hold down control and then click and then drag twice, that's going to join or fuse those models together. So now if I hold down shift, I can just start to smooth this out and get a really nice transition. Uh, between the two pieces that you see there. So we could go through and you can choose any one of the models that you see here. If you click and drag out and you push back up kind of like this, you can kind of push the model back and it scales it down. So it feels a little bit weird at the very beginning, but it's actually kind of a cool way of working. Um, so if we, again, hold down control and drag on here, usually I just do this twice that motion like that and that puts us in this mode um, where it's going to if we have a mask it can release the mask and uh, get that done so if I tap 4 for the move brush that I've got here if we go to B and then M and then find the move brush uh, then we can start to even deform this thing a little bit like this so if I go back to our brushes Here's one thing that's kind of nice. If you tap B for your brush menu, you can see some of your last brushes that you use. So I'll go back to this IMM primitives. And then this time I will do a sphere. And let's just say we're pushing some eyeballs like this. And I go ahead and move them into the surface of the skin like this. And I like the placement of it. But let's just say I have the gizmo tool on and I want to try out one of these different pieces of geometry. I can just click on it. And you can see how it's going to toggle and um, go through the different objects that you see within here and try those out. So that's a really kind of cool and interesting way of being able to add new geometry and add it to your model pretty quickly and easily. Uh, the next thing we can do is take a look at how we can use just primitives within the uh, the subtool area. So if we go to subtool and we open this up, we can go and say append and we can append anything in the subtool area. So this becomes new objects that you get to work with. So if I click append, uh, we've got a bunch of different primitive types that are in here. If I do sphere 3D, this is going to give me a, a new sphere right here. So if I put on the move tool and I push it over the gizmo tool, sorry, and I scale this down, I'm going to scale down a little bit further in here like this and I can take these corners and I can move it around and I can push this just like this. I'm trying to get this to where this sphere will sit right at the uh, edge of this piece. So we might have to do a little bit of manipulation. So you can see when we work in 3D, uh, a lot of times you do some kind of basic operation and then you got to turn your camera and get a different vantage point. It's really the only way that we can work in 3D and know that everything's kind of working uh, as expected. So there's a few different ways that we can get this over here. If you've got my interface, um, you can just use this mirror. And if you want to hold down control and click on here 
at the very bottom, it'll tell you the button path where this stuff sits. So this is under deformation mirror. So I can just mirror this across, and then I'm going to use this mirror and weld, and this sits under geometry, uh, mirror and weld. So I can click that, and then now I've got uh, two eyeballs like that. I'm going to hit undo real quick. The other thing that we could do is if we duplicate this in the subtool stack, we've got another one over here, and we can just go to that place that we just saw for mirror. We can go and do this in the deformation stack. I'll hold down shift and just open that one up like that. And then we could do the mirror on X just like that. And now we've got two eyeballs. So if you wanted to keep them separate left and right, and you call this uh, I right, and then we'll click this, rename, call this I left like that. Um, you can keep them separate. And if you want to merge them together, we could just go open this up and say merge down like this. So then now we've got two uh, brand new shapes for things like that. Okay. So the other way that we can uh, make new geometry types, which is uh, fairly interesting, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this sub tool and I'm going to select this one here and I'm going to go to the very bottom. I'm going to close this up and under initialize, they have this thing where you can click on a Q cube or a Q-sphere or a Q-grid. And these pieces of geometry have a resolution to them. And it makes it to where you can make really clean geometry that you would be using with the Z modeler brush. And that's uh, ZBrush's way of being able to basically do box modeling operations with inside the program. So with a two by two by two resolution, I'm just gonna hit Q-cube. And I'm gonna put it on solo uh, so we can just take a look at just that object and hide all the other subtools. Just puts it in a temporary isolation mode. I use that so much, I, I built a hotkey for it. I use Alt S for that a lot. And if I turn on the polyframe, you can see the hotkey for that, Shift F. This is gonna make a really nice clean piece of geometry for us. And hold on Alt and then click on the uh, go to unmasked mesh center right here for this. And you can see if we change the options for this and just hit Q cube, um, it's going to change the divisions of the object. And so if we do one by one by one, we get something like this. If we go four by four by four, you can see how we're getting a cube that looks something like this. If we do a Q sphere, we got something that looks like this and we got a Q grid. And we also have Q cylinder and it's gonna be a cylinder in the uh, X direction going down that direction or Y, or we can have it face down Z like that. So that's another way that we could uh, create geometry. I'm just gonna take this off the solo mode right here like this, and then I'll just take this and push it out right here uh, like this, and maybe I'll rotate it back slightly, just something like that, okay? Um, the next thing that I'll do, I'll duplicate that shape, and I'll show you that they have in here under the gizmo tool, they've got this gear icon, which will allow you to make a cone. And let's take a look and see if I go solo for this. The cone is actually fairly small. The cone, these they've got these different settings in here for this. I just wasn't expecting it to be quite as small. We can always scale this up after the fact. But if we do this, this is gonna give us a division in this dimension, and this is gonna give us a divisions in this dimension. If we use a cylinder, we've got, uh, you can put a hole in this, you can change the resolution in this dimension, uh, or you could change the resolution in this dimension, like this. So we could turn that into even a triangle, a uh, square, a pentagon, like that. So that's pretty pretty darn cool, uh, all the options that you can, that you can do with this and uh, change it quite a bit within here. So I was expecting a dimensional change back through here and that's where this one is like that. So we can get a nice clean shape like that. We could go to the poly cube. I think this one would be uh, fairly self-explanatory for this, for the divisions that you got going on here. And then we got a poly cylinder. Uh, you can tell this one's a little bit different the way that it caps it. It keeps everything, I believe it's trying to keep it almost uh, like quads. And so we can change the resolution going back this direction like that. And then we got a poly uh, plane dimensions this way, this way. Then we also have a sphere. And again, this one's different than a, a poly sphere where it's got poles at the top and the bottom. Uh, this one is actually all quads. 
and you can change the resolution in each one of these dimensions like that. And then we got this uh, ring, and this one is uh, really kind of interesting and in all the different things that you can do. We've got divisions going this way. We've got divisions, or a twist, sorry, with this. With this one, we have a divide going down the direction this way. We got coverage, so you can do a full 360. And this is going to be the radius inside, and this is going to be this taper effect. So if you wanted something like a horn shape, you could get it about to here, right? And then we could divide it up more this way, and let's divide it up this way a little bit more, just like that. And I'll go out of the gear icon and go to the Gizmo 3D, and I'll take it off solo. And again, it was really small, and I wasn't expecting it to be so small, but we can just take this and scale it directly up like this within here. And then I would rotate this thing about here, and I can kind of move it with this. And I was going to push here. I'm going to rotate it out this way. And if we want to move the pivot point of this, we can hold down Alt and then click and drag. And then that becomes a new place where it's going to scale and rotate from. So we'll just scale this up quite a bit like this, and then just push this down right here. Um, and then at that point, I want to just mirror this across this way. And then I'm going to do a mirror and weld just like that. And then what I want to do is I want to get this um, merged down with the head. So I'm just going to take this. This will uh, select something up in the stack this way. This will select it down. Uh, you could just click on it. So either way, if you want to use those buttons, you could do that. But I want to push this up in the stack. And then this button pushes up in a subtool in the stack. And then this pushes down in the subtool in the stack. If you want to hold down Shift, you can click on this icon. It'll shoot it to the top. If you hold down Shift, click this icon. It shoots whatever that item is all the way to the bottom. So I'll just push this up right here like that. I'll select the uh, head. I'll just rename it. And then this rename horns. So this isn't going to matter as I merge these things down, but just just to show you that we can take these parts, we can be organized with it, and uh, we can get everything kind of merged together. So I'm going to take this and then go right here to this merge area and say merge down like this. And I want to join those together, hold down control, and just drag like that. And then we can smooth out the results, holding down shift, and then just kind of smooth out the results like that. It's kind of cool how it keeps your uh, polygroup information too. And then this, uh, if I call this, if this was like something like a nose, and then if I just uh, dynamesh this already at the beginning, so it's not on. If I hold down shift and then click and open up geometry, I can go to dynamesh. And let's just put this at 500 and click dynamesh like that. And now I can kind of smooth this out. If we wanted, we could even start to do a little bit of sculpting on this uh, first. I'm going to tap X to turn on my symmetry. So we're doing something that looks like a shape for a nostril, and I'm just holding down Shift. I'm just using a Damien Standard. Again, highly recommend that you get the uh, interface that um, I've built, and uh, that'll just make it really easy for you to follow along and select some of this stuff. I'm going to put it on the Move brush. Like that, and then now I'm going to take uh, this subtool. Actually, I need this nose up underneath of it, so I'll do that, and then merge it down, and then we'll remesh, and then we can just kind of smooth out the results of that. And we're starting to get something that feels kind of cool. So it's not so much uh, really about what I'm showing you for actually what we're sculpting. I just want to show you that it's pretty easy to start working with some uh, different primitives in the program. And this can give you a nice jump start for the base of your mesh that you start your sculptural process. It should give you all the different things that you need to uh, start making some shapes and start making some interesting things and give you a lot of flexibility for how you get there.
So I could keep sculpting on this for a really long time um, and have a lot of fun with that, but I'll just go ahead and leave it there for right now. So there you go. Quite a few different ways for you to take a look at how you can make um, a bunch of different primitive shapes, use those in combinations with each other, and uh, start an interesting start to your sculpt. Now the next video, I'm going to be showing you how we're going to start off with one of these primitive types, and we're going to start to build the basis of our pillar shape. Um, so the actual shape for itself is not going to be all that crazy or all that kind of interesting. So I did want to show you the power of these tools with being able to do something kind of fun like this creature head, uh, just so you understand the power of the system that they've developed. Just because I know the next step is not going to be the most exciting thing that you've ever seen before. And it's basically just a uh, kind of a very simple shape for a pillar. But we'll be using some of those uh, geometry types to build the next shape.